Riley Moss, Chris Abrams Drain, or Levi Wallace, who is going to be the Denver Broncos starting cornerback opposite Pat Sertan, Todd? Um, I think it's a toss up. I think I really need to see all these guys kind of like perform in training camp before I can call it. That's a cop out. You, <laughs> you, have, you have a true He's starter. He's into the fire. You have a true starter right now. I think now? it's Riley Moss. I Why? think it's uh, because I think it's his turn. I think that's the natural progression you know, it's here. It's about turns. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the who's the best? Dem- it was Damari's turn. <laughs> no, it didn't go well. Now it's this year's Riley's turn. Oh, Next we can year, throw Damari Chris in there Abrams, too. A- yeah. Abrams trained Chris Abrams drains turn. A lot of S's. But well, I mean, well, I think wait, that's a baseline. If you're I think going that's a baseline. On next year, it being Chris Abrams drains turn. Yeah. Then it should just be his turn now, because you're already kicking Demari. Or, no, no, uh, no, no, no. That's his out. Like, that's, yeah. Well, that's how it's gone so far. Is Demari? He had to stay on the bench. Eventually, they benched. Oh no, Ronald Darby. Did he, he get a little bit. hurt? Got hurt. He yeah. got hurt, and that's how Damari got. That feels like a decade ago. That's crazy. That was only two years ago. Um, but yeah, so then was Damari got the job. He held that down. Riley was kind of in the background that whole time. No, there was one other corner too, though. Fabian Moreau. Fabian Moreau. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who yep. is Last no longer year. on the team. Yes, but he had a turn. He had saying. a turn, and I think like <laughs> Riley's ready to, to. It's time to see what he can do. And obviously, like the training camp will decide all of it. But I think the baseline coming in should be. This is, it's not Riley's job to lose, but I think it would make the most sense. And for that reason, I think if it's close, it's Riley's turn. I think it is Riley Moss's job to lose right now. The Broncos traded, the Broncos essentially give up two third round picks to get Riley Moss. They traded up in the third last year Uh with using a third from this year to do that move Mm -hmm. to get Riley Moss. So he better be the guy. Two third round picks in a corner isn't number nine overall pick, Pat Sertan investment, but that's a, Mm -hmm. that's a pretty good investment right here. And if Riley Moss doesn't work, the Bronc and Chris Abrams doesn't work either. Broncos need to stop drafting third round cornerbacks Mm because that's been like uh, the longest meme in Broncos country, like going back that was pretty quarterback the carousel. Quarter, yeah, yeah. past the quarterbacks. So they can't, uh, I mean, they got to stop swinging and missing on third round quarterbacks. And I think it's going to be Riley Moss. I think the building is very high on Riley Moss, but it does make me question it a little bit by using another, what was it, a third round pick? No, a fourth mm-hmm. round, no, fifth round pick on Chris Abrams. I guess that could be more depth this year. But I, I do think right now it's Riley. Yeah, he'll get a shot for sure. Can't say that it's his turn. I think you got to <laughs> earn the job. Um, and I don't know if he's done that yet. I haven't seen him in practice, so I can't evaluate mm-hmm. that. But it's not about turns, because then <laughs> everybody would get a turn. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. No, no not about turns. He did take, um, this one's for RK. He did take a big number, uh, jump in number. Yeah. He went from number 37, which is awful. Mm-hmm. To number 21. That could be so big. He's got that Aqib Talib swag to him right now. I wouldn't say that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the same number right there. Yeah, right? Same number for sure. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting. I do think if Levi Wallace, Levi Wallace is like your safety plan. Like, not the position safety, but safety in terms right. of everything goes poorly. All three of those guys can't play. Similar to Fabian last 100%. year. 100%. He's basically Fabian from last year. Fabian, I think, veteran minimum last year. This year, Levi Wallace, veteran minimum, plus like $160,000 signing bonus. Um, more guarantees for Fabian, though. So it's basically the same thing, where if all goes poorly, you throw him in there and hope for the best. But I would be surprised if he actually wins this job. I would also be kind of disappointed. If Levi Wallace is a corner? Yeah. For sure. That means your young depth isn't, isn't stepping up. Yeah. I he's a guy who got benched last year. So I'm going Riley Moss is the starter. Week one opposite Pat. Henry, you're going that as well? Of course, it's his turn. <laughs> it's his turn. Yeah, that's how it works in the NFL, right, Todd? I, I guess so. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I have my turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get your turn, and then you hold on to your turn. <laughs> Is that what they told you when you got the starting job? Hey, man, it's your turn. It's your turn, man. You didn't do anything <laughs> to earn it, but it's And then right turn. before I was like, I was like, hey, I think your turn's over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who are you going with? Um, what are my options? Riley Moss. Levi, Levi Wallace. Wallace. Chris. Chris Damari. 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 Yeah. Going Damari. Okay. okay. He kind of uh he learned from last year. I think so. We were yeah. really excited about him going into last year. He had a great second half of his he rookie did. season, I thought. Yep. He was awesome. Obviously the what four pass interference penalties in his very first game starting and then yep. really flipped it around after. Yeah. Um so it, <laughs> which it is definitely, crazy. Definitely could be. He had um, the most in the NFL and all of them came in one game. 
It was tied for the most. That is that is why. That's, That's tough. That is tough. And that question came in from Cody, our guy Cody, out in Las Vegas. Great question, mm. Cody. Next question in our mailbag coming in from Queen City Bronco says the debate seems to be elite physical traits versus elite mental traits mm. at the quarterback position. We've seen both be successful as long as the lesser trait is still above average. Do you agree? Yes. If the lesser trait is still above average, then right. yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yep. But you can't be, uh, what, what do I want to say, athletic and dumb and, and play quarterback. <laughs> so I think it, I think you definitely, if you're athletic, you still have to be smart. And if you're really smart, you have to be somewhat athletic to get mm-hmm. the job done. So, yes. Broncos have tried both routes in the past uh, quarterback. Are you era, mention, so. Do you want to mention names or something? Uh, do you like, want to? No, sounds I'm like not you gonna, have something <laughs> off the top of your head, maybe. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> They're your former teammates. No. I'm not going to make you do that, Todd. Um, but he says, coming out of college, Bo seems to possess elite mental and above average physical traits. Couple that with elite coaching with Sean Payton, and here's hoping we finally have our guy. I can absolutely be sold by that. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, Andre upstairs would be very upset if we said Bo doesn't have elite physical traits um, because, I mean, it's a five-star recruit, dual-threat guy, runs fast, makes plays off-platform, has a strong arm. Um, again, like, I don't, I don't know. That his speed isn't, like, top three among quarterbacks. His arm strength isn't top three among quarterbacks. So maybe that is a lack of, like, elite. But he is a really good athlete overall. Like, if you were to take all the quarterbacks and have him compete in, like, a decathlon or something, he would, he'd do well. Um, but, yeah, and I also think it's a lot tougher to say somebody is elite mentally than you want to give it credit for. Like, it's great to see him go through reads in college. There's just a lot that goes into that sort of thing. Again, it's, like, study habits and, like – can you pick up on the trends that the defenses are doing similar to what you were saying on the podcast today, like week to week to week, like what do they do on third downs? How do you know what it's going to look like that there's, there's a lot of studying that goes into it. That's different than just pre-snap reads and getting the ball, the right, right place. Yep. Do, do you guys see, I think it was Albert brew. We might've talked about this last week where he had a little, uh, note on Bo Nix's backpack during the meeting with Sean. Payton. Oh God. Yeah. And Sean just loved that the only things that were in his backpack were football related. <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah, I don't know. Like, thank goodness the guy didn't have like I don't even what what isn't football related? Drugs. Like a PlayStation or yeah, a, like he didn't have a place. You went dark. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that controller. Do, do people like, carry Playstations around in their backpack? Yeah, some people are big gamers. Wow, uh, that would be big time. Yeah. <laughs> to like and, a workout, that'd be crazy. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a red flag for sure. Yeah. yeah. And final one coming in from Queen City again says this offseason is lining up competition all over the roster. Mm-hmm. Who do you think shakes out as starters for another historic position of pride for the Broncos? The safety room. So obviously Brandon Jones. Uh-huh. Yep. That's that's a no doubt dollars. starter. And yep. who else? I think it's PJ. I think so too. I mean, you just after what he did last year, you have to put him on the field. Like there are some limitations. There were some plays that I thought like especially down the field or like some corner routes where it's like ah better throw maybe this does get completed and it's a different story those didn't get completed and then you have like what the three games in a row he has the sacks and he has the the forced fumbles in a couple games like he was just so instrumental to that stretch where you were winning a bunch of football games similar to Jaquan like you have some concerns about Jaquan just man coverage he isn't super scheme versatile just because he doesn't have the top end athleticism but when you just see what he did you have to put him on the field. And I think PJ is in that exact same boat. I love it. Yep. I'm going to PJ as well, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's Caden Stearns. The biggest issue with Caden Stearns is his ability to stay healthy and stay on the field. Um, you just hope that he's able to be healthy. And if he is healthy, he could absolutely beat out PJ. But I think that that position, even with Brandon Jones, Brandon Jones didn't even play more than 50% of the snaps last year. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's just a big rotation there at the safety spot, which is so different from what the Broncos are used to. For yeah. what five years it was uh, K Jack, but before last year he never missed time, and obviously we know Justin Simmons didn't miss time. So I think we're going to see a totally different philosophy to this safety room. Yeah, I don't want the rotation. No, I want whoever is the two best to play. And my thing with PJ is like correct what we need to correct. But every time he's on the field, he produces. Exactly, he makes plays. I think you have to find a way. If you got to play to his strengths a little bit, then you know we do that. But he he produces. Same thing. With um, Jaquan, Jaquan, when he's on the field, he produces. We got to find a way to get this guy on the field. So I think it's, I think it's, paramount that it's PJ as the starter, as far as like him between him and Caden Stearns. Yep, that's my opinion. And I think last year there was a plan to run a bunch of three safety packages, but then the safeties got hurt or suspended, 
and you just didn't have the opportunity to do that sort of stuff. And so I think this year you can see that. Like you can bring Caden in and play them like him and Brandon Jones deep and let PJ play in the box a little bit. Uh, whether it's taking PJ off or whether it's like a dime look and you're taking linebacker off because you don't have a whole bunch of great options there. I, I think that they can mess around with some different things and and get those guys opportunities. But yeah, it, it if it's not PJ and um, uh, the new guy. Brandon, Brandon Jones, Brandon Jones yeah. whose name I just said, uh, I would be shocked. Yep, and that's going to do it. This was a fun mailbag. Things started off a little bit spicy and mm -hmm. then settled down. If you want your comments <laughs> answered, make sure to leave them over at thednvr.com on this mailbag over on the website. That's for diehards. Thank you all so much for watching.